Welcome to Guts Tutorials, and in this video, I'll be covering Practice Problem 10.6. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, please subscribe. And if you like this video, just go ahead and give it a thumbs up. So we are asked to find VO, which is indicated across the capacitor using superposition. So with superposition, what we basically do is we consider the contribution of all the independent sources and add them up. So as we deal with one independent source, we turn the other ones off. So let's see what we, where we can start or what we can start with. So we're going to start with the voltage source, the voltage source over here. So we're going to find the contribution. So first, let's just say the total VO is equal to the contribution of the voltage source plus the contribution of the current source. So if you had more elements, you'd add them up. If you, if you had, that is, if you have more independent sources, you'd add them up where you'd add the contributions of each. So we only have two independent sources and therefore we add the contributions of these two, a voltage source and a current source. So let's proceed. We're now gonna find the contribution of the voltage source, All right? So doing that, we're gonna have a new circuit which excludes that part or which takes the effect of the current source out. And this is gonna be our new circuit when we are finding so let's, let's just transform this into cosine. So you can actually use this in, in this form as 50 with an angle of negative 90. This becomes easy to punch into your calculator, right? So we're just gonna put this here. So you're gonna have 50 with an angle of negative 90 degrees. Then we're gonna have the rest of the circuit. We're gonna have eight up here. Then here we have EO. Here we have 0 0.25. And here we have a one Henry inductor. So even though we change this, even though we change this into this form, we still use this angular frequency of five, which is indicated over here. And this is why we need that. So these values are raw values and we, we want to turn them or our aim is to turn them into impedances, which we can actually work with. So for a capacitor, you find the impedance as one divided by JWC. And for an inductor, the impedance is JWL. So substituting this omega, which is our angular frequency of five, and the value of this itself, we're gonna have something like this. So it's gonna be J five multiplied by one over five, because 0 0.2 is one over five, that cancels out. So we're only gonna have one over J, and this is an identity, if you wanna call it that. One divided by J is negative J. So the impedance of the capacitor is negative J ohms. Then we're gonna to come to the inductor over here. JW, JWL or J omega L. This is actually omega, the Greek symbol omega. So you're going to have J omega, which is still five. Then you're going to have the value of the inductor, which is one. So this is J five ohms. So you can now work with these in the same units because the resistor is in ohms, that is in ohms, and that is in ohms now that we did that transformation. So our aim is to find the contribution of the voltage source to this VO. And to do that, we can just simply combine these two in parallel because they share two nodes. Also combining these into one single impedance. Because they're in parallel, they have the same voltage. So we're gonna combine them into one single impedance. Let's call it ZT. And they still have that VO contribution of the voltage source across it. So to find this, we're just basically just gonna do um, voltage division. So the contribution of the voltage source to VO is 50 with an angle of nine, negative 90 degrees multiplied by ZT divided by ZT plus eight. And this will be the contribution of the voltage source. But then what is ZT? It is a parallel combination of ZC and ZL which is equals to negative J multiplied by J5. This is just combining these two in parallel, right? Negative J plus J5. So punching this into your calculator should give you ZT of negative J 1.25, right? 
So then, taking the ZT into this equation, you are basically going to have the voltage across that ZT, which is the same as the contribution of the voltage source. And the answer you should get for the contribution of the voltage source should be 7.7 7 with an angle of negative 171.12 degrees. Now, this is the cosine form. And if you check in the textbook, it's actually given in sine form. To find the sine form, you just add 90 degrees to this one here, to this angle here. And in sine form, you're going to have 7.7 .7 sine. And we're going to have 5t. Adding 90 to that, you're going to have negative 81.12 degrees. And that is the contribution of the voltage source in sine form. So these two are equivalent. This is just a cosine form. This is a sine form. Moving on to find the contribution of the current source. The current source contribution. Right. That is what we're going to do now. So finding that, we're going to take out the voltage source and only focus on the contribution of the current source. So this is what is going to happen. We're going to have a short circuit where we have the voltage source. Then we're going to have the eight ohms over there. Then we're going to have zero point, uh, this is ZC. Then we're going to have VO sub C, which denotes the contribution of the current source to VO. Then we're going to have over here, we're going to have ZL. Then we're going to have this four cosine 10 T. So now we have to find those values again for this angular frequency. So we have to find ZL again, but now our angular frequency is 10. So we're going to say one divided by J 10 multiplied by one over five. That is going to be two. So one divided by that, which is going to result in negative J 0.5. So that's C. So that is that C, sorry. So ZL is J omega multiply the value of the inductor, which is going to give us J 10. And both of these are in ohms. So now we're interested in finding this VO due to the current source. So if we just combine these two in parallel, because they share two nodes, if we combine those in parallel, we're going to have eight in parallel with ZC, this is ZC. So 8 in parallel with ZC. The answer to that is going to be, or we can rather say, so let's see, there are quite a few ways to actually do this. So let's not do this. Let's say, let's combine these two over here. I'm going to combine 8 and that so that we leave the one which has the variable which you're actually interested in untouched and this is why so all of these are in parallel if we combine eight and zl we'll have the combination of those in parallel with zc so you can now do current division to find the current which flows through there and then multiply that current by zc so that is what we're going to do so we're going to combine eight with zl which is over there and we are going to have, as the result of that parallel combination, we're going to have 6.24695 with an angle of 38.6598 degrees. So 38.6598 degrees. That is going to be the result of this here. It's going to be the result of the parallel combination of 8 and ZL. After doing that, we now have a circuit which looks like this. This is the parallel combination. Let's call it ZT again. Let's call it ZT over here. Then you're going to have your ZC with the VO indicated across it. Contribution of the current source to that. And then you have your current source over here. Now that we have this, we can do or we can apply the current division formula to find the current which flows through ZC. So this is how you do it. So four with an angle of zero. So four with an angle of zero multiplied by 
this parallel combination over here divided by the parallel combination plus Zc. So this is your value of the current which actually flows through Zc. So I through Zc is equals to, so I through Zc has a value of 4 with an angle of 0 multiplied by 1.05 with an angle of 3.76 degrees. Now taking this current over here, which is I of Zc and multiplying it by Zc, we're going to have the contribution of the current source. So the final contribution of the current source or the contribution of the current source should be 2.101 cosine 10t subtract 86 0.24 degrees in volts. So the total value or the final value of VO using superposition should then be 7.7 .7 sine 5t subtract 81.12 degrees added to 2.101 cosine of 10t subtract 86.24 degrees.